Morgan Christian and John Bunyan once stood in the marketplace and he raised his voice similar to this might have been a little louder maybe the buildings weren't here maybe it was a lot of dirt but John Bunyan stood on the marketplace and preached the gospel and I'm a born-again Christian here to tell you the good news of the gospel what Jesus Christ accomplished on the cross of Calvary I raise my voice that everyone may hear the good news that you can be delivered out of the kingdom of darkness and transformed in the kingdom of the love of his son Jesus Christ I give you the Word of God the Holy Bible what is written that Jesus Christ said I am the way I am the truth I am the life and there's no way under the Father except through him he is supreme superior he has the preeminence he is above all and he holds all things together by the word of his power and today you hear the preaching of the gospel the gospel of the kingdom the kingdom of God that comes within when a man repents when a man turns from his ungodly lifestyle that wicked heart of unbelief when you do not believe God you are a sinner but you think you are a good person because you compare yourself against one another and you really are not that bad but when you compare yourself against the law of God it is like a schoolmaster, a school teacher, to reveal to you that you are a lawbreaker and you need a savior. And Jesus Christ is the only one. Salvation. What are you saved from? You are saved from the wrath that is coming, that is being revealed. The wrath of God is being revealed right now in your conscience. Because as many as the Lord loves, he rebukes, he reproves, he chastens, he disciplines, he corrects. Will you turn to God's rebuke when the Spirit of God reveals to you your sin and your conscience? When the Spirit of God reveals to you your self-righteousness? When the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit of God, comes and reveals to you that you are near to the day of judgment. You are accountable. You are responsible. And every time the Spirit of God reveals to you when you lie, or when you look at a woman and you commit adultery and you lust, or you do that which breaks God's law and His commandment, you are guilty. You are a sinner and you are bound to stand before God as a lawbreaker. But today you might experience life. Today you might experience the forgiveness of sins. Today you might receive the mercy of God. God's mercies are new every morning. We are experiencing the mercy of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. Oh, if, if John Bunyan was here, what would he think of Bedford today? Here we are at the resting pace of, uh, of John Bunyan. Uh, every Christian pastor, every Sunday school promotes his book. You know, praise God for this holy man. Let me tell you something. Let's, let's, let's stop playing make-believe. If you Christians lived in the time when this man was alive, you would have told him, Bunyan, come on, concede, take the permit, do the right thing, don't go to jail, you're only reaping a judgment on yourself, you're bringing Christianity a bad name, just simply concede. This man whom they polish and they make a nice tomb over, they would avoid Mr. Bunyan if they preach with him during his theater. Here's a man who had character. Here's a man that not only believed in the Bible, he went to jail for the Bible. Unlike Christians today, 
He's, he's placed in the city of London where Christians won't go to jail for their faith. This man did because of a permit. That's why he refused to go to jail. This same pastor that says, read his book. Oh, I was so inspired. This same pastor would have told Bunyan at the time, comply, brother. Think of your wife, comply. Think of your children, comply. Don't need to go to jail for this. You're doing it the wrong way. But this man did have character. And like any other dead saint, you build the wonderful tomb. You polish his tomb. You say great things about him. You read his writings. But had you lived in the time this man lived, you would have rejected Mr. Bunyan. Much like you would have rejected Isaiah the prophet for preaching nude. You would have rejected uh, 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 Hosea for marrying a whore and preaching. You would have rejected Elijah for mocking prophets. You would have rejected Jonah for building an ark. Or you read these guys. You glorify these guys. You build a fantastic tomb for these guys. But yet you deny everything that they actually preached and represented. And uh, here we're honored. I would say that this man is living and among these dead people. This man is now tasting of eternal life. His day-to-day -day living was very difficult. His day-to-day -day living, there was nothing highlight. Sitting in the cell, I know by testimony, there's nothing fun about sitting in the cell for your faith. He did it for years, and he didn't comply just simply out of principle. He told the judge several times, you let me out, I go preach. Try that, try to find a minister in London or in this whole country of England that would even do half of what he does. Shame on you, England. Uh, yesterday, we went to uh, Paris. And uh, in Paris, preaching the gospel with the banners, with a uh, amplification, and even passing out tracts, can be illegal in Paris. And we pushed the envelope. We went right to the Eiffel Tower. We went right for the, uh, the triumphal uh, uh, pillars. And so uh, the entrance area where they have all their victory speeches. And so uh, we were asked to leave all these areas because of what we did. However, because we're Americans, we negotiated with the police and we kept the preaching going. They saw we were willing to go to jail for what we believe in. And so I think Christians have lost uh, the concept of fighting for the faith. The Bible says contend for the faith. And in France, uh, they're even timid to pass out a tract because they might offend somebody. The first night we came to England, uh, Brother Kevin was almost taken away uh, because he had a patch with homo on it. And somebody accused him of speaking against homosexuals. He accused him. He didn't do it. He accused him. So in this country, where uh, you have men of God who once were inspired and moved, uh, you can't say certain things. We just came back from preaching. We just came back from pre preaching at a graveyard, uh, and uh, uh, during the process of uh, preaching in front of a graveyard, uh, a homosexual came by, and he said, what do you think about gay people? As though he wants to bring me into his conversation. And so uh, what Christians have to understand, if they live here, is before you respond to that, ask the guy, are you telling me to break the law? I'll tell you what the Bible says if you want me to break the law. Uh, and he wanted me to get involved in the conversation. I kept it with, it's not my opinion, it's God's opinion. We did talk about sodomy, uh, whether he calls the police or not, who cares at this point. But uh, this is unique in America. You Christians in America, you walk around like Chicken Little thinking the sky is falling. Let me tell you, you still have a lot of freedom in your country. You want to you wanna see uh, you know, uh, free speech removed, uh, uh, go to England. Uh, go to France, uh, go to Spain, uh, go to some of these other countries, uh, go to these uh, countries where you have Islam taking involved and in, in, in running and ruling. Uh, you'll kiss the soil you live in uh, and don't take it as a blessing because with such actions comes responsibility. The Bible says to much is given, much is required. 
and we're going to be required of much more on Judgment Day. But if we don't fight for our freedom in the street, in the pulpit, at home, uh, on a college campus, I don't want to turn into England over my dead body. At least if I die in my dying bed, I know I fought all the way uh, to have free speech uh, to preach Jesus. And even if Obama, our wicked president, commits a crime to say that you can't open air or you go to jail, I'll at least start my, uh, my prison ministry. Uh, but are you Christian willing to do that? Uh, you know, you think you lost your rights. I say you have uh, too many rights. Uh, why don't you come out here to England? And I don't want to be like England. I don't want to be like France. The problem is those men lost the fight. And so uh, I don't care whether there's just 12 of us. We're still going to fight. There isn't a month that goes by that we have at least two court cases in this country where we're fighting for free speech. You don't have to like my method, but if I get shut down, you're next. If I get shut down in the street, the pulpit's next. If I get shut down in the street and the pulpit's next, your home is next. And so whether you like it or not, you better understand, I'm like the yellow canary in the coal mine. If I don't come back, that means I'm dead and you're in trouble. And so you ought to be very thankful for what we do, because I don't want America to be anything like England. This is like a, uh, a, future, a future machine that we went to. I don't want to see America turning into this. Well, you can't speak against another man's religion because a Muslim might get offended. You can't speak against another homosexual or sin because he's offended. I say fat on that. We need to fight for what we have and we're going to be judged very much for what we have. And so I hope this, uh, this film is a wake-up call to you. Are we losing our rights? Absolutely. Uh, but be very thankful we don't live in England, France, Spain, Iraq. Uh, you're an American and you're going to be judged much harder and uh, contend for the faith as the Bible says. You can't even be a spiritual man if you can't even be a real man and get some backbone and stand up in the end.